Hello friends, welcome back for another video. I have my son Trenner, he wanted to sit for a video, which is a rare occasion, so I'm welcoming it. If you're new around here, my name is Sandy K, and if you're not new, thank you so much for watching another video, it really does mean so much. Today, as you can guess by the title, we are talking about, <laughs> Trenner's eating my Reggie Pops because I have them out, but today we are talking about first trimester, must-haves, aka how to- So today I'm talking about 10 tips to help you guys out, the first one being have help. This one is the biggest one that really helped me survive my first trimester. Week 7 and 9 were some of the hardest, and week 7 I was in Mexico with family, so it was a wonderful distraction being at the beach, and also I helped with the kids. I could nap and have people help preparing my meals, which if you know, it's so much harder to cook for yourself because then you have like food aversions for whatever you're cooking. And then at week nine, my mom came to my house and helped me out and literally cleaned, cooked, did everything to help out with the kids, let me sleep in, and that made a huge difference. It was definitely a game changer just to have help. So whether you can have a babysitter, <laughs> that's loud, just suck on it a babysitter, a husband help out, a friend, anyone just to help with the cooking of meals, the cleaning of your house, but honestly, the cooking of meals and getting sleep is top priority. My tip number two is to wear C-bands. They have a little acupressure point that presses on the wrist. You do it about like an inch down or so, like right here. And it really does help when you're having those nauseous moments or all day of nausea. Weeks six through eight were probably the worst for nausea for me and I literally just lived in these so I would highly recommend. Number three is lemon water, which I have this little lemon right here to support that. Also the baby at week 13, which I'm almost at, I'm in 12, but it's about the size of lime. So that's probably about half a lemon, right? <laughs> so wake up every morning, I baby love drink lemon water. Yeah, the baby says. And just microwaving it for 30 seconds and it helps release some of the, what's it called? Just the juices of the lemon and makes it taste better, I think. And before I eat breakfast, I just think it's very refreshing and can also help settle your stomach. Fourth thing is Preggy Pops, which quite frankly, I kind of got sick of the flavors of these. I kind of only like the lemon one at the end and I ran out of those ones. So just ginger chews, those ones, or hard candy. This pregnancy, I would say whatever sounds best to you. Maybe you get a variety because some days the ginger seems too strong. Sometimes the lemon water does the trick and sometimes a preggy pop is fine. Like I would use them at church if I, I would just always have them in my bag because I had a bunch of them. But my mom, when she came, she brought me a bunch of sour candy, gummy worms, sour patch kids. And honestly, just sucking on a few of those helped out a ton because I was craving it and it just also helps settle your stomach. My next tip, I'm losing count, so I'll put it up, but is electrolyte powder. This is the one I have used twice, and it tastes pretty good. I like it extra salty, so I'll even add some more salt in if you've had like the element drink packets with the salty raspberry or whatever it's called. I love those flavors. So that one's blue ras. And water this pregnancy, it was crazy. It's so hard to drink for me. Like I would barely get in one 40 ounce water bottle. Having electrolytes in it helped me get water down. And then especially if you're throwing up, thankfully I've not thrown up in any of my pregnancies. I, for the first time today, almost did. I literally gagged twice and I was over the sink like it's coming. And then it didn't, thankfully. But I'm like, wow, who knew at almost 13 weeks? That's when I almost threw up with my third baby. Highly recommend if you're having a hard time drinking water or if you're throwing up a lot, you need to replenish those electrolytes and it can be super helpful. Next up is having freezer meals or pantry staples on hand. This is mostly for the people around you. If you have little toddlers or another, I have another little girl who loves eating even more than him and she's 10 months old. So if you need to feed other people or you know, my husband needs to eat dinners at night too, I'm talking, I would just buy like freezer burritos for my husband's lunches for easier access and breakfast burritos for him. I have mac and cheese for the kids, you know, oatmeal. Also having easy things for you that you can tolerate. I found bananas were easy to stomach for me. Mama, I have and protein bars. Yeah, are you opening another one? Oh boy, this boy's gonna eat all my preggy pops. 
Now why I also added freezer meals in there, I actually did do a huge freezer meal prepping right as I was still feeling good, around four and five weeks. If you are feeling good um, and you're early in pregnancy, I would highly recommend making some freezer meals. Unfortunately for me, making dinners with like a lot of onions and smells, I got really turned off by even thinking about the process of me making them, putting them together, making me not want to eat the meals. So that was kind of a bummer. So maybe if you have someone else make them for you, or maybe just having easy breakfast, maybe making waffles or pancakes and freezing them for your toddler, just things you know they'll love that you can easily get them when they're hungry and you're not feeling up to making something. Number seven, which is another huge, huge big tip up with like my first one that I shared, is to let some things go and let them go without mom guilt. Just know that this first trimester is a little crazy and and it's okay that your kids are not eating super healthy, that you're not getting them outside as much as you would like, that you're not playing with them on the floor as much, or letting them just do more independent play without you. This is the time to just be okay with dirty dishes in the sink when you're going to bed. This is a great time to let go of deep cleaning and just do the basics if you can even manage that or request help from a spouse or a friend, buy more freezer meal foods or dinners and eat out more. Just some examples of ways I let go. Usually I make my own whole wheat bread and I totally let go of this. And I mean, I still did it while I was pregnant, but if I wasn't feeling it, I would just go buy a loaf of sourdough bread or some type of other bread that I could stomach at the store. I also really let go of the expectation of having super nutritious meals and just realized I'm gonna have what sounds good and I'm going to survive and just make it through. Food aversions are real, but they won't last forever. So give yourself grace if you're not eating fruits and vegetables every day or at every meal and just know you'll be okay and you'll be eating fruits and vegetables again one day. Tip number eight is to take naps and sleep in as much as you can. Whenever the kids are napping, like most days, I would take a nap and it would usually be a power nap, like 20, 25 minutes. And that was usually enough to get me through my day. If my husband was home, maybe I would take even a longer nap would highly recommend sleeping in because it is the time to do it in the first trimester. If you're kind of debating like, should I be pushing through or taking it easy? I would definitely say err on the side of taking it easier and your body will reward you with feeling a little better hopefully. But yeah, I would sleep in most days. I mean, I'd wake up with my husband at 4.50 for work and then go back to bed any day I could. Number nine is to get some sunshine. Even if you're not up for walking around, I would say just sitting in the sun for a couple minutes will do so much for your mood and your mind to even just get out of the house where you've been feeling sick and maybe just watch your kids play for a little bit. It's awesome if you have toddlers, just let them get their energy out. So you, I don't know, it just helps with some of that guilt. You may feel like, okay, they're having a fun time today because I'm a bum on the couch. Like just going outside is an easy way to let them explore and have fun while you can also take it easy and enjoy some sunshine. My last and final 10th tip is it can be lonely in this first trimester with not telling anyone if you decide not to tell early and watching other YouTube videos like this of other women and their experience in the first trimester or their week by week experience can be super helpful and validating to know you're not alone. There's other women out there pregnant and being sick as we speak and just know you guys will make it through. I know it seems like horrible when you're in it, but even here at like almost 13 weeks, 13 weeks and two days, I am feeling already like out of that fog and then I'm already like, it wasn't that bad. <laughs> like it's crazy how your mind just forgets so quickly and you will get through it. So I'm praying for your mama or those trying to conceive. If you're watching, just know I'm sending you all the baby dust and you'll be having your baby in your belly hopefully soon yeah anyway thank you so much for watching another video i'm out of breath so i'm gonna go see you guys in the next one bye Bye. bye. <laughs> generous toast i thought it would be fun to do a bump update real quick here at the end so here is my 12 week almost 13 week belly and I finally pulled out my maternity clothes and so this is one of my maternity dresses. 
All right. <laughs> we'll see you guys.